on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. They think it's all over. This week it's a 1970 special, hence the fact that everyone's dressed in 70s clothing, apart from Jonathan, who hasn't made the effort at all. <laughs> With David and Jonathan is a Romanian tennis star who also writes tennis based detective thrillers. Readers love the deer stalker wearing, pipe smoking hero, Navratilova of the Yard. <laughs> Irina Stasi! With Gary and Rory is a great Manchester City and England striker who famously made his fortune as a loo roll magnate. He sold his first job lot to a young Gary Lineker the day he came up against the young Vinnie Jones. <laughs> Francis Lee. We begin our trip down memory lane with the excuses round. David, Jonathan and Illy, we jump forward to 1973, the year that Illy here topped the world rankings. And the Wimbledon semi-final between Britain's Roger Taylor and the eventual tournament winner, Czech Jan Kodesh. It's out, and and it's all over. Semi-final wins to Kodesh. Now, that was the last time before Tim Henman came along that a British man reached the Wimbledon semi-finals. So how did this shocking state of affairs come about, David's team? Nick, may I just start by welcoming Illy to the show. Illy, thank you for coming to the programme. May I say you look splendid this evening? One of the greatest tennis players that ever lived. Because you may, I don't know, you might have heard of me, because I'm playing a bit of tennis now, and... Uh, <laughs> You know, I'm thinking of turning semi-pro this year. Matter of fact, you look at this. You've got the, f you've got the past of tennis, you've got the future of tennis, and you've, you've got death in the middle there. But <laughs> look at it. Looks like the ghost of Harpo Marx. <laughs> oh. I saw you exercising today. I was doing my smash. Show, what do you think? Me. Do you think I've got a chance? Come on, show us. Show I've got show us. Show on, show. In this suit, I don't, I'm, because no, my, my nuts will probably pop out. <laughs> show it to me. Jonathan. What? Why have you got no arse? <laughs> <laughs> it's firm. No! <laughs> Just stand up field. Tell him what's there. Look at that. Very good. How many times, Jonathan, straight. I do not want to be in your gang? <laughs> <laughs> there, are people, there are people in Stoke watching saying, blimey, they must be the new fashions down south. <laughs> The game's changed a lot, because when you played, you know, they were real characters in the game, weren't they? I mean, it was you, there, there was... Well, Borg wasn't much of a character, I'll, I'll give you that. But you, 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 know, you had Mac words, and you Mo. don't know the names of any other <laughs> hey, tennis players. <laughs> that's it, that's the answer. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know three. Jimmy Connors. <laughs> Jimmy Connors, he was American, I think. Now, <laughs> but do you miss the old days? Do you miss the characters? Do you miss the wooden whacket? I mean, do you miss playing the Wackets game the way it was? <laughs> they played with the wooden whacket back then, didn't they? <laughs> Illy, you, you know about tennis. Mm -hmm. How come we don't get British in the finals very often? Britain has some of the finest umpires in the world, so... <laughs> <laughs> Do I look like Anne Diamond in this? I have a feeling <laughs> like I'm Anne Diamond. <laughs> Robin Schmidt, Remember her? Yes. <laughs> you must know, because you were, you were playing back then. Yes, 73 was, was my best year, but... Was your best ever? Uh, for tennis, wasn't so good year, because that year, at, uh, during Wimbledon, when Roger uh, reached the semi-final, uh, was a boycott from all the players. So the best players didn't Nobody play? Nobody played, no. And it gave us a chance to get knocked out in the semis? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the correct answer for three points. Well done, Ellie. Yeah. Yes, the answer is that there wasn't much competition. 1973 was the year of the players' strike at Wimbledon after Yugoslav player Nicky Pilic was banned from the tournament for refusing to play in a Davis Cup tie. To be fair on Taylor, that match was considered much more difficult semi-final than the other one and Jan Kodesh went on to lift the championship. The other semi was between John Pertwee and Basil Boom Boom Brush. <laughs> The last British man to actually reach a Wimbledon final was Bunny Austin between the wars. He was terribly unlucky to lose, though. On match point, his top hat slipped forward and dislodged his monocle. <laughs> Gary, Rory and Francis, we take you back to 1970. Francis and the rest of the England boys were well on the way to retaining the World Cup, strolling through their quarter-final against West Germany 2-0, when this happened. Big goal. This France no good. Got a shooting chance. Good goal. England 
Hamilton really now under terrible pressure. Stay there. A goal. A good ball. Pull up. So what at the time was the excuse given for England losing after being two goals up? Gary's team. Can we just see that bit of um, Francis again? Can we just see that? Big goal. Oh. oh. He was playing a one-two off me bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Only a one-two, eh? <laughs> That's something we've learned already tonight. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, if that had been me, I'd have still got up and ran back and tackled. Mm, that's because you've got no bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> and you're a, a you're a toilet paper millionaire, weren't you? No, I was. I used to make toilet tissue. Fantastic. Because um, Gary played for Spurs, so he's associated with shit in a rather different way. <laughs> Whereas you, on the other hand, just look like a giant bog brush at the moment. <laughs> So what about toilet paper? You're an expert on toilet paper, eh? I was, yeah. What's yeah. your favourite? Three ply is very good, you know. Do you get three ply toilet oh, paper? you certainly do, yes. Yeah. You can't get your fingers through that, though, can you? I've never tried. <laughs> <laughs> it's half the fun. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Walker's crisps, if anybody wants them. <laughs> was Alf Ramsey shagged out after his affair with Ulrika Johnson's great-grandmother? <laughs> Was it the fact that they brought Bobby Charlton up to rest him for the... Yeah, Bobby Charlton. Charlton. And, and Martin Peters came I'll give you well. three points for that. Well done, yes. Right, right, right. The reason given was that England's midfield stars Bobby Charlton and Martin Peters were substituted because Sir Ralph Ramsey wanted to save them for the semi-final. Another England excuse was that they'd been kept awake all night by drunken fans fighting outside the hotel. There was a similar complaint from the Irish camp at the last World Cup, when the fans were kept awake all night by drunken players fighting inside the hotel. <laughs> Gordon Banks famously pulled off the save of the century at that World Cup, hurling himself downwards to scoop the ball off the floor. Amazingly, David Seaman did exactly the same at the last World Cup, swooping down to fish the ball out of the back of the net after it had gone over his stupid ponytailed head. <laughs> And at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have three points. Come on. We move on to Sporting Bluff now. Gary's team, it's the 1978 World Cup for you, when Scottish manager Ali McLeod hilariously promised that he would bring the cup home for Scotland. Everything went according to plan right up until the moment they played their first match <laughs> against Peru. On top of the table, and it's one each. Kubiat, with space for the shot. Oh. Mignanti dummy, the ball slipped through, and it's a goal. That was Peru thrashing Scotland 3-1. Now, shortly after that, the same Peru team lost 6-0 to hosts Argentina. So how come the Peruvians, after beating the self-proclaimed World Cup favourites, suffered such a loss of form? David's team? Peru lost 6 love to Argentina because they are paid $50 million by the Argentine government. Or Peru lost 6-0 to Argentina because they were kept up all night by Scottish fans. Peru <laughs> lost 6 love to Argentina because their kit shrunk in the wash. <laughs> what do you think of Scottish football, Franny? I think it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but at least the Scots qualified. That yep, year, they, they did. In fact, there are any young Scottish football fans watching? Shall I explain the word qualify to them? <laughs> <laughs> no! Yes, come on. No! Uh, who's the toughest opponent you ever played against? Oh, it was quite a lot of them on time, yeah. yeah. Uh, I would think people like Dev Mackay. Real hard man these days. Ronnie Yates from Liverpool. Dennis Tommy, Smith. Tommy Smith, he was... Dennis Smith. Oh, Dennis Smith and Stoke, yeah, he, yeah. Was, quite, he was quite tough as well. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's toughest opponent was Graham Rousseau, wasn't it, Gary? <laughs> Actually, it was Mark Lawrence. He was quite strong from behind. <laughs> <laughs> Just before you do. I oh, know, well, I was ready. <laughs> What did you say, Jonathan? I said it's because they, their the kit shrunk in the wash. What, like David's hair? <laughs> <laughs> he looks, you know what he looks shrunk. like? Looks like the TARDIS has crashed, they found a new Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> He's regenerated. Yeah. Look, you've got two beautiful assistants from the world of the planet queer. <laughs> <laughs> Clever! Clever! 
these shirts are nice thick and keep you warm in the in January rather you know now they're all flimsy and you'd get really cold wouldn't you <laughs> I think I I don't see don't Gary talking to the manager before going out oh please let me wear my parka <laughs> <laughs> did you ever think about running around or anything like that <laughs> We've decided, haven't we? Yeah, it's the bride. It's, it's the backhand of God. The backhander of God. So you <laughs> think that Illy was telling the truth? Let's see if you're right. <laughs> yes, Illy had it right. Argentina needed to beat Peru 4 0 to get to the final and deny Brazil a place. And it later emerged that the Argentine government had paid $50 million to make sure it happened. The Peruvian goalkeeper reacted angrily to the bribe allegations and issued a furious denial, standing on the deck of his 100-foot yacht, carved from a single diamond. <laughs> Scotland manager Ali McLeod vowed that he wouldn't leave Argentina without the World Cup. That's Ali McLeod of 27 Malvinas Avenue, Buenos Aires. <laughs> Before the tournament, the Blue Peter programme presented Scotland with a cuddly mascot, which sat in the net behind goalkeeper Alan Ruff's line. With hindsight, the manager admitted it would have been better to put Alan Ruff in the net and the mascot on the line. <laughs> <laughs> David Seam, it's the man voted the greatest sportsman of the century for you. Hey, it's Joe Frazier! Joe Frazier! Joe Frazier! Joe Frazier! Joe Frazier! Joe Frazier. And these two force it on to the end. The double shuffle from Ali, all the old tricks being turned on. Now, Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier's three fights were such <coughs> epic encounters because of a grudge between the two. But what was that grudge, Gary's team? Ali fell out with Frazier because he was seen on TV sticking pins in a Joe Frazier voodoo doll. What yeah. a coincidence. Joe Frazier! <laughs> Joe Frazier! <laughs> Ali fell out with Frazier because Frazier insisted on calling him Cassius Clay. Ali fell out with Frazier over who had the prettier daughter. Gary, I think, is in the voodoo. I mean, I, I can't cover this, but I overheard Michelle telling a friend that he sticks a tiny pin in her every single night. <laughs> <laughs> you better be careful, he's back in 70s mode, he's giving me a hard look. Look at that. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> With that hair, you look like Philip Schofield's waxwork model in Chisora. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't boo. Yet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, were your dates here? <laughs> <laughs> we will we tell you from... I like you in that shirt, Ellie. Ellie's Thank the you. only one who came here. He didn't have to get changed for the show. That, that is, what? <laughs> That's happening here in Romania. You <laughs> You've been to Romania. What? No. Oh, no. I've been there. It's a lovely place. It's a great place. What anyway, I went, there to, I went there to, to do a thing about Dracula. I went in search of Dracula. Oh, God, if you meet Dracula, that means you're going to live forever. <laughs> <laughs> what do you Sorry, think, should, Captain? Should we try? Well, yeah. of the three, I think the most plausible is the name thing. Right. That it was the Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali name thing that... Gary. So you think so that Gary was telling the truth? Let's see if you're right. Yes, Gary was being honest. Ali got upset with Frazier because Joe refused to acknowledge his change of name from Cassius Clay. Ali responded by accusing Frazier of being an ignorant Uncle Tom and calling him the Great White Hope. Ali is, of course, not the only famous sportsman to change his or her name. Yvonne Corley used to be called Yvonne Goolagong, while David Gower used to be called Mrs Doubtfire. <laughs> and Chris Eubank was originally christened Cecil St. John Sassoon. <laughs> Ali always liked to come up with a rhyming epithet to publicise his fight venues. There was the Rumble in the Jungle, the Thriller in Manila, and the hastily cancelled fight in Nantucket. <laughs> The Ali Foreman fight in Zaire in 74 took place after midnight so it could be shown live on American prime time. Audley Harrison's last fight also took place after midnight because that's when his opponent finished his shift at the Red Lion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team have six points. Time now for what's going on. Gary's team, take a look at this. <laughs> so.
So what was that all about, Gary's team? You know Jimmy Hill, friend, you a friend of his? Yeah, I've known him years, yeah. Nice I, I, I actually played against him when I was about 16, but Jimmy, he'd be about 31 then, 32, mm. Jimmy. Was he any good? Ah, uh, yeah, he was very good. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Hill being a linesman, and he, these days he wouldn't be called a linesman, he'd be called a big chin twat, wouldn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's a good opportunity for Gary to do his famous Jimmy Hill impression, though, isn't it? It would be if I had one. Go on, Gary. We want to hear it, ladies and gentlemen, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. Nice to see you, to see you. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? Be. <laughs> the linesman was injured, wasn't he? And Jimmy being Jimmy. I'll give you three points, yes. That was Arsenal against Liverpool in 1973 when the linesman injured his leg. The PA asked if there were any qualified linesmen in the crowd and out trotted Jimmy Hill in a camp tracksuit. <laughs> it was the first time the crowd didn't need to ask, who's the wanker in the blue? <laughs> and while we're on the subject of television punditry, if you've ever wondered what Mrs Barry Davis hears at those tender moments, just listen to this famous piece of commentary on a Francis Lee goal. Lee? Interesting. Interesting! Oh! Look at his face! Just look at his face! David Steen, here's yours. Well, it certainly drove that one pretty well. And a long chase here for David Gower. Well, a bit of confrontation here. <laughs> Lily has violently thrown that bat away. It really is uh, a very sad state of affairs. David Steen, what was happening there? He was fast there, I saw him running. You noticed that, you know, very fast. face across very the ground. Could we have a look at it again? Could we have a look at that fast. bit of David running again? Yeah. How yeah, fast he was. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, did you see that? That's called running. <laughs> that, that to you, should you have tried could've... it between the wickets. Yeah. Didn't need to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, get the staff to do that. <laughs> Actually, if you look at that clip closely, it's quite a sad clip, because you can see the moment where his hip goes. <laughs> I'm amazed, though, because I didn't know there was any colour footage of you playing cricket. <laughs> I don't know. I've got no idea. And you know why? Because yeah, I don't like the game of cricket. I make no bones of it. It's dull. <coughs> it's boring. It's for fools and toffs to play. <laughs> no one really likes it. No one's ever really liked it. It's the emperor's new clothes of sport. You don't get a bunch of twatty clothes. doctors who sit in a box each week in Lords, pretend they like it. They just want to get pissed on Bollinger and pretend there's no working class outside. That's the situation. <laughs> it's like the bad. <laughs> I'm not having that. Billy, you all right? I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> I love cricket. What's the I don't understand. What's the question, Eva? I forgot. <laughs> what is going on? Where? It's a very in that fair question. Well, it was clear we, a, man, a man, a cricket man, <laughs> threw the bat away and everyone got angry with it. <laughs> it's as plain as the nose on your horrible geography teacher face. <laughs> that bat was made of aluminium. Mm -hmm. uh, Dennis Lilly was trying to promote it for its own sort of personal use, as it were. It made a horrible sound, made marks on the ball. The umpires, well, we complained. It. Mike Braley, as captain, complained to the umpires that it was scuffing up the ball and making a horrible sound. And uh, the umpires said, you can't use it. So it's Dennis, correct for three points. Thank you, David Cow. <laughs> David Hill was also an equipment pioneer. He had a bat made entirely out of edges. <laughs> Lily's bat was the most revolutionary innovation seen in cricket until 1991 when Phil Tufnell walked out to bat in a helmet with a built-in spliff holder. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have nine points and Gary's team have nine points. <laughs> Time now for our regulars to feel a 1970s sportsman. Gary and Rory, could you move to your places, please? Oh, Christ. Well, you remember that cartoon series, The Hair Bear Bunch? I do. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> I'll take the wig off of the phrase. Sorry about that. Take it off! <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
All right, can we have our first mystery <laughs> guest, please? <laughs> Your time starts now. Oh, hairy hands. Is it Venus Williams? <laughs> oh, hang on, what's this? Oh, wow. Oh, Franny, you know when Snellinger kicked, up, kicked you in the balls? <laughs> and they, oh, is it Jordan's plastic surgeon? <laughs> see any clues on the shirt? Oh, what's that? The little cock. Is it you, David? <laughs> It's someone wearing a Tottenham shirt. Now, it's either it? an ex-Tottenham player or it's yeah. someone who's been paid a lot of money to come it's on here and make a fool of himself. It's a football. Well done. Thanks. Nice. Can you have a shot? Come on. Yeah. OK, you go first. Have oh. it! <laughs> <laughs> Not bad, eh? It's a, Is it a goal, eh? Blindfold. That's Lineker's distance record for a kid. <laughs> Is it um, no. Pat Jennings? Pat it is Pat Jennings! <laughs> well done, three points. Okay, Jonathan and David, your turn, so take your places, please. Up, yes, you can get up there. Tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> No arse. <laughs> no I've got an arse, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, Jonathan. Jonathan, we know you've got an arse. We've heard you talk. Hey. <laughs> See? It's as simple as that. Do you know, you look like a turkey basted and wrapped in bako foil ready for the oven. <laughs> you remember, you ever see that documentary about that freakish little kid who used to sell antiques? <laughs> Can we have our second mystery guest, please? <laughs> okay. Oh, what's that? <laughs> is, that, is that a shotgun being primed? That's, that's like, possibly. And your time starts now. <laughs> Ah, there you are, my lovely. <laughs> now, when I asked, they said there were no capes. <laughs> I'm really cross now. I mean, genuinely, I'm cross. Jonathan, he's wearing a mask. Could be someone really ugly, like Luke Chadwick. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Jesus wept. I think it's... Is it the bloke from Ann Summers who comes round and throws the parties? <laughs> This is the rabbit, David. They're very popular. I think you, you want to get one. All those notes on the fridge you've been ignoring. Buy me a rabbit. This is what she meant. <laughs> Nothing to do with a pet. Why has he got a sword? He's got... He's a cricket hat. This is a... That's a cricket no, bat. No, it's not a... That's a cricket bat. You wouldn't know. Okay, and this is a <laughs> cricket hat. <laughs> oh, this is, in fact, Kendo Nagasaki! Oh, I should have known. My favourite wrestler. Kendo, how are you doing? So the scores at the end of that round are David's team with nine points and Gary's team with twelve. Uh -huh. We wind up the show by playing the name game. This week, of course, all the sporting names plied their trade in the 1970s. The leaders go first, which is Gary's team. As many names as you can in 90 seconds, starting now. He uh, used to play for um, QPR, I think, and he's also an Aussie wicketkeeper. It's a sort of wet, wet area up there. Very Rodney good Marsh. indeed. Um, his middle name, his nickname was the same as Helicopter or... Chopper. Chopper Harris. Harris. Or Dick. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> but I didn't have to say that, so it was just gratuitous. <laughs> oh, this, he used to play football for Southampton, and he's a racehorse owner, and... Meet Shannon. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, a swimmer. Mark Spitz. Very good. <laughs> um, big nose, looks like a gypsy, played with you. Some of it. Very good. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Um, this is a wrestler. Um, not Little Mummy, but... <laughs> Big, Big Daddy. Very good. Um, he used to play for Liverpool and England. His um, second name is like a motorway in America. Hi Steve Highway. Very good. Isn't he good? This is a former Bradford footballer. His name sounds... You know that sort of bit in the garden that all the shit... You know, the outdoor bit that where all the shit is. Not White Hart Lane, but Compost. just... What? <laughs> Compost. <laughs> well, no, but no, it's more, more Which acre? Technical Which acre match, is you know, it? It's got a tank or a, a, a pool sometimes. Cess pit. Cess is the first name. And the second one is what peas come in? Pods. 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 So you moved on to 20, which means that 12 will win it for you. 12, we 12. can do it, Illy. <coughs> now, you see, I'm working where we've got someone with the second language. I'm going to do I one in Romanian for you. Okay. Him. I did something. Ask him. I'm going to do one in Romanian for you. Okay. First one, okay. Off we go. Uh, for you. Uh, <coughs> Barbieri Mare. Jimmy Hill. Yeah! yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was, that was big I've been there. All right. The mountain wouldn't come to him, so he had to go to the mountain. First Mohammed, name. Mohammed. Second name. He's uh, he head of the Sains Massive. Mohammed there you go. Uh, right, if you had never had sex there, that would be a... Virgin lobe. Virgin... Yeah. yeah. Virginia. <laughs> and the second name, when you go out into the sea, you wear wellies and you... you Wait, yeah, Wait. Virginia, but okay. <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, this is a, it was a 70s wrestler. He looks a bit like Rory. You'd find him on the farm, like Rory, but they'd be stacked up. Stacked. Haystacks, John. Haystacks. There you go. I, it's, it's two things. It's a horse and it's glue. Okay, he won the grand. <laughs> <laughs> he won the grand national three times, I believe. Red rum. There you are. Yeah. Well yeah um, all right. Uh, the second name is. You remember there was the fable about the tortoise and a small rabbit-like animal that ran very fast, a, but he didn't beat him. A hair. Hair. Uh, first name is. There was a popular show called Three Two One, hosted by Ted Rogers. Sadly, he's no longer with us. And he used to have a bin that's name was Dusty Bin, Dusty Hair. Yeah. Well done. All right. Okay. The first name is. If you're playing tug of war, they, this is what they tell you to do. They go. On. Oh. No, you. Tug. No, they go, cut, they shout it at you. Well, I can't say I've ever done it myself. They say, of course you haven't done it, so you get your butler. But when your butler's doing it, what do you shout while you're drinking your Bollinger? I'll go for the second name. Second name, oh, Scout, okay. sing this. Something similar. I've lost so it's in Romanian. It's Australian. Okay, in Romanian. Romanian. In Romanian. Etroskio, uh, Ivan Gulligan. Ceausescu, no, he's dead. Well, that's Romanian, no, it's the same that. name in Romanian. Ceausescu's dead, man. <laughs> I call him Chelsea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So David's team have 15 points, but the winner is Gary's team with 20. Yeah. Our thanks to David, Jonathan and Illy, Gary, Rory and Francis. We're all off to the 80s, so join us there next week. My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. Southampton against Spurs, the FA Cup third round. What do you reckon? A draw? Well, either way, it's live on BBC One tomorrow at 5.35. On the way tonight, Lenny Henry on tour after the news.